Hi, welcome to Val's Visions and Designs. I'm gonna make a Halloween wreath for you. And what I'm gonna be using today is an elevated work frame. This is a 15 inch frame. You see that it's elevated. This gives your, your wreath a little bit higher and fluffier appeal. Now, when you get a work frame, it already has your tinsel ties attached. There'll be eight ties on the top row and you always want to double check and count them because sometimes it's off and there should be 10 ties around the bottom. So what I'm going to use today, I have a variety of things and I just want to give you a few good ideas for decorating. Um, I would burn these pieces at 18 inches and I did a detailed instruction video on how I wood burned and so I'll link that in the description today. So I've got 18 inch pieces of this black and white check mesh 18 inch pieces of this orange metallic mesh and I'm going to be doing poofs with this real pretty deluxe black foil. So the other things that I plan to incorporate into the wreath, this is a happy Halloween sign that I got from Craft Outlet and I wanted to pull a little bit of the Harlequin into it so I do have a Harlequin pumpkin. A couple of different ideas about how I think I'm going to attach it and then the ribbons that I have picked I've cut these at 13 inches and I will make sure that I leave all of the description of everything I'm using again in the description box. Just drop down and it'll give you a, a, a section that will show you everything that I'm using. I've got this pumpkin, uh, orange, and, orange with the, uh, there's some of the, the check and I'm putting in the Harlequin with the silver and then I'm also going to be using this is a beautiful spider ribbon that matches the sign just perfectly. This is a two and a half inch canvas ribbon. It's a really good ribbon. And then I'm going to just pair it with this black and white. So those are the four ribbons that I'm going to use in the wreath. Now I have more ribbons that I'll probably incorporate into the bow because I want to pull a little bit of a different color in here. And the color that I think I'm going to pull in is going to be a little bit of the lime green. So I've got this ribbon, which came, I want to say I got this one from Craft Outlet. might have been Deco Exchange. It's got the black, the orange, and the lime green. So I think I'm going to use that one in the bow. And just some ideas for you, how you can decorate. You can use your scatter balls that you get these things, the glitter little spiders. All of these things come from Dollar Tree. And another thing I love to use, guys, is the glitter tool. And this one is the orange and black spider web. And then I even have one that's silver. So I thought this silver might be pretty because I could kind of, you know, pull that silver into it with this color. So this is kind of where I'm going with it. I'm going to clear the clutter and get reset up and we'll start off with our base. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to start off making poofs. So I've got a different angle for you hoping this might be better so you do have 10 ties i've counted them one two i say i have three four five six seven eight nine ten so i'll go around the bottom and i open up all of the ties and then just take the ties that are in the center and push them down so you don't get confused okay just push those out of your way and then I always pay attention to where I start. I like to start where the two ties are real close to each other. That way it's going to make the transition from the bottom to the top much easier. So this looks like a good place to start. So I'm just going to take my 10 inch mesh and just kind of scrunch it to make a little beginning piece. And then I like to, to zip tie it right to this bar. So I've got a black zip tie. And I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of run right through that section. And this is just going to anchor that mesh so that it doesn't come loose. And you can use whatever color zip ties you've got handy. I just happen to have some of the black. And it can get a little tricky holding it and getting your zip tie going. There we go. So again, I'm just going to anchor this in place because I don't want it to come loose. So as you can see, I'm not on this tie. I'm basically right in the middle. And then just cut that little excess off. And then the easiest way to make your pouce, you want to take the sides of your mesh, 
kind of curl them under and then just jump from not the tie that you're going to but the tie right past it and then just fall back and place in your mesh now you can do this with 21 inch mesh today I'm just using 10 inch mesh because you can also do the same thing with 10 inch mesh so again I'm just going to make sure that my my ends are under jumping to the tie ahead of where I'm going and then falling back this just helps make consistent sized poofs as you go around without having to stop and measure and if you'd rather measure you can just look at your mat and make about a 10 inch so go from I'm, I'm on my mat I'm going to go from 10 to 20 and if you look that ends up being exactly the same thing as if I jump to this tie and then just fall back and if my poofs get uh, look like they're not the same because some of your ties might be further apart just kind of go ahead and open them up and just try to keep them as balanced as you can. Uh, making poofs can be a little challenging. Make sure that you keep track of this mesh while you're going so that it's not turning under. I mean, I'm sorry, that's not coming out from being turned under. You don't want it to get twisted or it's not going to poof pretty. Okay, so I'm just going to continue going around the bottom. And again, you can measure. To your 20. You see how far this one is away from this one? So sometimes what I'll do is go ahead and just take that piece. If it will shift, I'll move it. These are in pretty tight. They don't want to move. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with that measurement. It's going to make this poof a tiny bit bigger. So you just kind of have to watch it as you're going. That You don't have a choice of where the ties are placed. Sometimes they'll move. Sometimes they won't. But overall, it's going to still work out pretty good. Now, this mesh, I did burn a couple of pieces to use in the center, but we'll still have plenty of mesh to make it all the way around the uh, top and the bottom. Again, just keep curling, keep jumping, falling back. This just gives your wreath some body, and it's going to give it a little bit of sparkle because I want it to have a little sparkle. And once I get around to where I show you how to move up to the top, I'm going to pause the video and make the poofs around the top, and then I'll show you how I cut it off to end the process. So we'll have 10 poofs. Just keep making your jump or measuring on your mat, whichever one you're more comfortable with. I do think it helps to keep up with the measurements. That way, again, you get consistent poofs that there's not one that's too much bigger than the others. Now here's where I'm coming to where I actually started. So I'm still going to jump to this tie, fall back, and now I'm going to come up to this tie, and all I do is bring my mesh up, and I'm just going to make a tiny little tuck, so I kind of smooth it as pretty as I can. And then just go ahead and lay it in this tie. And another good thing to do before you get started doing the center is to kind of take these ties and push them down out of your way. So that way you don't accidentally grab one of those ties. So I've kind of got them pushed down. And now before we get started, let's go ahead and open up these top ties. That'll just make it easier as you're going. Now, we're not going to actually do anything in this tie at the moment. I just kind of keep it to where it's going through it. Let me try that tuck one more time. There we go. That's better. So, I have my two pieces ready here. When I come back around, make sure again that it's still kind of tucked up under so your poofs will be consistent. making your way around again you can measure from the 10 to the 20 which is where my mat is or just jump back and forth to the ties I think jumping back and forth to the ties just helps make it go a little bit faster but again just check your piece each time you're going so that you don't have one that looks real small and this one kind of looks small so I'm going to go ahead and jump to this one and fall back now they will be a little bit smaller on the top 
because your ties are a little bit closer to each other. You can do this again with 21 inch mesh or the 10 inch. I just thought this would give it a little bit of body and a little bit of sparkle. Okay, so I'm just going to pause for a second. I'm going to do these last couple ones and then I'll show you how I, sh I cut it off and cut it loose. Alrighty, so I've made all of my poofs except for this last one where we started. Right here's my, my ties. So I'm going to go ahead and jump and make that last poof fall right into these two ties and twist them in place. And then I'm going to cut my mesh, cut it loose. And you see, even after using this for a few of the cuts, we still have some left. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it loose. And I may use a little bit more of this in the center. Take this piece that you just cut and try your best to work it underneath so it doesn't show. So if I kind of tuck it up underneath that poof, it doesn't really show. And then flip over your wreath and attach this end piece you're going to anchor again to the frame just so that mesh doesn't come loose so i'm just going to take it around the frame and use a zip tie to tie it and then you can cut off your zip tie and then i can cut off a little bit more i always cut more than i need just so I don't actually have a, a big bulk of material. So here's where I started and I anchored and here's where I stopped and I anchored. So you flip it over now. Again, just kind of get your ties where you'll have them to where they're ready for you to start adding something else because we're going to add in those ruffles of those two other colors. So my plan for that is to add one ruffle alternate the colors and I brought over my ribbons so I'll have my ribbons ready to go in and I think what I'm going to do when I do the black check piece let me just grab a piece of the black check I'm going to make a ruffle and again a ruffle you're just going to lay your mesh out I cut these at 18 inches you're going to start at the end and then just ruffle you're just pleating your mesh until you get all the way to the end just make sure you have it grasped right in the middle and then I'm just going to bring it and add it to a tie and then twist tie it in and then I'm going to add my ribbons on top of that so once you get it in just spread it out and I think for the black, I'm going to go ahead and go with the orange spider and the black and the white stripe. So again, I've cut these at 13 inches and I have made dovetails. Dovetails, again, is just where you fold your ribbon in half and then just cut from the folded corner. And that gives you that pretty dovetail. So I'm going to fold them in half. And even make a little crease to get your center and then scrunch right up that middle and that's going to give you pretty close to to halfway in the middle and then I'm just going to add them to the ties and then twist them a couple good times and then you can just pull out your ribbons I usually go with the top one I do the top one and then the bottom top and then the bottom and you can curl them under just a little bit too. I think that looks pretty. Then I'm going to do a ruffle with the orange. Again, this is cut to the same amount. It's 18 inches. I'm just going to lay out my ruffle and I'm going to go right up the center and I'm just pleating and pulling that mesh to me until I have my pretty little ruffle. And then I'm going to bring it to my next tie lay it in and I do try real hard to get that in the center spread it out and then this set I'm going to use my other two ribbons I'm going to bring in this pumpkin and the harlequin and I'm going to put the pumpkins on top whichever ribbon you lay on top is the one that predominantly is going to show 
get my center mark, scrunch right up the center, and then bring it to the tie and twist it in. So this is what I'm going to do for the whole entire wreath. Again, I take the one on the top, pull it up, the next one goes down, and then alternate them back and forth. That way all your ribbons show. And of course, sometimes it's easier just to come back and fluff your ribbons after you're done because you're going to mess them up multiple times. So let me show you two more pieces. We're going to do the same thing all throughout the whole wreath. So I've got my pretty side up, laying out my mesh, get your center point, and then just ruffle, just pull that ruffle to you, right up the center, grab it right in the middle, place it in your tie, right over where you had just done the poofs, and the poofs again will show just a little, but they're again, they're filling up part of this wreath too to give it just a little bit of shimmer. Just spread out your ruffle and then we're going to pick our ribbons of course I always have my ribbons in a mess <laughs> all right get your ribbons do the find your center open them back up scrunch right up the middle and you can kind of angle them down a little bit when you start add them into your mesh and then just kind of fold those ties down so they don't snag anything. Pull them out. Top ribbon goes first, then the next ribbon, and then alternate them. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way around the wreath, and then I'll be back. All right. All of it's on. You can see it's nice, full, fluffy, very pretty. So now I'm going to show you a couple of options of things you can do with it. So let me bring the camera back down. Now this is totally up to you. Uh, I happen to love to add a crossbar to the center of my wreath. I think this just gives you a little more something in the center for your sign to lay on, your bow to lay on. That's totally optional. You could put your sign right in the middle. Um, but I, again, I have a pumpkin I want to incorporate. We could kind of put it at an angle. I know I want to add a bow, and I'm thinking I'm going to add a bow. And I'm thinking I'm going to put the sign towards the top. That's just kind of my thoughts right now. So when I add something to the center, I take two pipe cleaners, and I'm going to use black and just tie them together. Make sure you, you twist tie these together very tight, because I've had them come apart before uh, when I've done this. And then just flip your wreath over and on the back you'll have these little sections that have a crossbar and there should be about six crossbars and that's just where these are joined together if you can see it I know we got black here so just pick one of those and take your pipe cleaner and pull it up around that crossbar and just kind of go back and forth with it until you can kind of get it wrapped around the two different sections so it won't come loose. I just kind of kind of keep twisting it around in there until I get it nice and tight and then just pull it across to the other side and I'm going to turn it around. Again, I'm right here on a crossbar and I go to the bottom ring, pull up my pipe cleaner and then pull it tight. Again, just be sure these two pieces are locked together so you don't pull them apart there in the center where you connected them. And of course you can do one and a half pipe cleaners. I usually do two just to be sure that I have plenty. And then just kind of keep wrapping it, twisting it around. And then if I have this much excess left over, I just go ahead and clip it off so it's not in my way. The wires that are in these will poke you. So it's just good to have them twisted down. And I thought since the sign was orange, I want my center to go ahead and be black um, just because I think that the orange is going to pop more on the black. So I'm going to go ahead and use a few of the pieces that I would burned earlier. I have one of the black and white check and I did these pieces at uh, roughly 24 inches and I'm just going to make ruffles with these. 
and then I'm going to clip it together here real quick while I cut a pipe cleaner in half. Take a couple of your pipe cleaners. These are just regular uh, black pipe cleaners. Cut them in half. And then I can take this pipe cleaner, kind of go ahead and fold it in half, wrap it around the center of your ruffle, and then just twist it. Kind of pull it up, twist it tight. This will give us something to attach to that bar we just added. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the two black. Again, you'll use a full roll of your black mesh and a half a roll of each of the colors. And sometimes I find it helpful when I'm doing a ruffle. Lay something heavy on the other end. I just laid a little rock on there. And then when you make your ruffle, that kind of helps keep your mesh from curving back and forth. It'll be straight. And then I just kind of knock it out of the way. <laughs> Go ahead and grab your pipe cleaner and twist it around the center. Again, twist it tight. And I'm making three of these little bundles. So I have one more. Again, I wood burn these when I was wood burning my mesh. And then I'm just gonna ruffle and bring that mesh to me. Take another pipe cleaner, fold it in half. and then twist it tight. And this will give me three pieces to add to the center on that pipe cleaner that I added. I call this the crossbar. So I'm gonna add the check in the middle just so it's more matchy. And I just pull it right in the middle, flip over my wreath and I can add and just twist this pipe cleaner and wrap it around that center. Again, try to keep your your pieces turned under so they don't poke you and then just kind of spread it out and you want to make sure when you're adding your ruffles that you kind of let your ruffles all spread together uh, that just helps keep your wreath nice and fluffy and now I'm going to add a black one closer to the bottom flip it over and add the pipe cleaner. It can get a little tricky to see when you've got the same color and it really won't matter what color you use. Uh, I like to try to match just because I don't want a funny colored pipe cleaner poking through. Then fluff these up together and you can also lift anything that may be falling into the center up. And because I did wood burn all of these pieces, you can see my fray is going to be very minimal. All right, again, we'll do one more. We're gonna add this one in. I haven't quite decided which bow I wanna use yet. Um, so I may link a couple of bow videos and then let you kind of look at the different bow videos and decide which one you might wanna do. I have several different ones that I'd like to try, but sometimes I'm not sure which one I wanna do until I actually get the wreath put together. So, like I said, I know that I want to put the sign probably up towards the top. So, kind of, kind of thinking it's going to look like this. I want to do my pumpkin. And I think the pumpkin I'm going to use, I'm thinking of using binding wire to insert into the pumpkin and then wrap it around the frame as well. And then a bow for the bottom, not a super huge bow but a bow with multiple ribbons. So let me pause again and think about how I wanna lay it out and then I'll be back. Okay, so here's what I've decided on the wreath. I went ahead and hot glued and used some E6000 to glue these cute little Dollar Tree spiders on the sign, just to perk that sign up just a little bit. And then I went ahead and put in a little bit of the pretty glittery tool in the silver and the orange because I kind of want to keep this silver and black and orange. But I did go ahead and I think I'm going to attach my sign. I like to try to keep it right about in between two ties so it kind of will go like right here. And then the bow, I went ahead and made the bow 
and this is a 2-1 bow. I'll be sure to link a video showing how I made it. Um, I just did two sets, so I did two of the spiders and then one of this two and a half inch that I had. And then I did pull in a little bit of the green. I didn't want a lot of the green. And then this on the top to keep that silver and black theme kind of going. So the pumpkin, I poked a hole in two different holes with my ice pick. So be careful if you do that. And then hot glued one piece of the binding wire that I'm going to attach to the frame. And then this stake, actually it's just a skewer stick. Uh, and then I attached foam over the top of those. I did allow these to dry for quite a while. So this way when I go in, I'm going to attach this to the frame and then hot glue it as well. So I'll make sure it's got two different ways to stay in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add all these things to the wreath and then come back and show you how it turns out. Alrighty, here's how I finished it up. Uh, try to get this straight. So uh, I had one more little pumpkin that I added up to the top and I'm just keeping it simple. It's still not straight. <laughs> I'm keeping it simple so that the beauty of the mesh and the ribbon show. So here's just some inspiration for you. You could hang it any way. You could have the sign uh, a little tilted wherever you want to put it. And let me just show you one more thing. When you get, when you're adding your signs, try to pay attention to where your, your ribbons are coming out so you can keep it kind of nice and even on each side and you'll know you're in the middle. And usually it's better to try to have this in the middle as well. But I think this little bit of sparkle tool from Dollar Tree adds just a nice little touch of a little spider webbing going through it. So I hope that maybe this has given you some inspiration for Halloween. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I have more things coming. Thanks, guys. Bye.